welcome, welcome again. Um, my name is Anna Wise. I am Associate Dean of Admission and Director of International Recruitment here at Hamilton College. We are so glad that you've been able to join us for today's session, which is an international student welcome. We have a really, really great set of panelists today who are current international students at Hamilton College, um, and they are going to be looking forward to answering uh, questions that you have about international student experience here at Hamilton. So um, I wanted to get started and have them introduce themselves. Um, if we can maybe start with um, uh, Cherry. Sure. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Cherry. I was born in Harbin, China, so the northeast of China. And currently, I'm a junior. I, um, so I major in anthropology and economics. And I, so I work at a coffee shop on campus. It's called Opus, if you come visit. Um, and then I also work at the communication office. So, yeah. Cherry, do you want to show us a little bit your background? So where are you calling in from right now? Of course. Um, so I currently live in a dorm called Root in the dark side. And I will show you a little of the interior and then I will show you uh, what my view is. So, uh, so I live in the Dingo, which is not uh, the most normal situation, which is a double with, without a roommate, and then just some sparkling walls for the mood. And then uh, <laughs> this is my view, which is really pretty in the morning. Um, so every morning I like to just open my shade. Um, so yeah. That's interesting. It's the dark side of campus that you live on, but it doesn't look very dark this morning, does it? Quite bright with the sparkly light. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you, thank you. Um, so uh, Kiara, how about you? Where are you? Uh, where are you right now? So uh, hi, I'm Kiara. I'm currently on light side, so I'm on the opposite side of campus. I'm outside of the science center. So let me just show you really quick. So behind me is the science center, and as you exit, this is the view of campus. This is all of light side at the chapels down there, all of that. So I am from the, I'm calling in from the other side. Um, but I, it's so nice to, you know, have everyone here. I'm Chiara, I am a junior. I am originally from Italy, but I live in Spain. I am a math major with physics and computer science minors. And on campus, I am a member of the International Cultural Association. Uh, I am also a QSR tutor. I tutor math, physics, and other such subjects. And I am also a member of the running club. So when it's beautiful, like today, you know, we go all meet up and go out. But so exciting for everyone to be here. Thank, thank you. Running is one of the things I'm trying to do right now, too. It's it's such beautiful areas to run. It's almost like there's no excuse. The only excuse is that running is hard. <laughs> um, absolutely. Uh, so uh, Joaquin, um, where are you right now? Uh, hi, uh, my name is Joaquin. Uh, I'm a sophomore. I'm a fellow light sider, but I'm currently in dark side. I live in Melbank. Um, unfortunately, my, I'm the common room and my common room is not in the conditions to be shown around right now, um, but it's yeah, midterm. I, it's midterm time right now, so I'm sure that common room is getting a lot of use, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's the weather. It's the weather. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm a sophomore. I am uh, an econ major, sociology, stats, uh, double minor, and on campus, I I play for the soccer team, and I work for the admissions office and the alumni relations office. Um, and yeah, pretty excited to have you all joining us today. And where are you? Where are you from originally, uh, Joaquin? Oh, I miss that. I am uh, from Lima, Peru. Thank you, thank you. And last but not least, Maroon. Hello, everyone. Name is Maroon Mizir. I'm a sophomore, double majoring in econ and math. Um, on campus, I am the president of the ICA. I play music with almost all the bands slash music clubs on campus, and I work three jobs. Yeah. I always like to tell that when I introduce myself. Also, I live on the gray side, which people almost always forget about because it's down the hill. However, I have one of the best singles in the, on the- Oh, we lost your, we lost your sound, Amarin. I think maybe your headphones came out then. Yeah, that's, hello? Yeah, gotcha. Got yeah. So like I live in a single, right? 
but I have an assembly that has its own bathroom right here. And that, like down the hall over there, I, we have our own elevator. And this is the view from outside my room. Like you can literally see like the down, uh, sorry, the lower side of campus. Now people say it's not a good place to be in because you know, you have to walk up the hill every day, like three times to get food and go to classes and such. But I don't see it as a downside. I see it as a bonus to keep me in shape. So yeah. All right, fantastic. And Maroon, where are you from originally? We got it. We have a flag in the background that gives us a hint. But yeah, sorry, I'm from Beirut, from Lebanon. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So thank you all so much. And again, thank you for um, uh, doing this uh, session. I know um, everybody's really excited to hear from you about the international student experience here at Hamilton College. Now, we did have several questions that were submitted up uh, ahead of uh, this session. So we're gonna try and address some of those. If you do have additional questions that you want to ask any of our um, student panelists, Feel free to do so. You can use the chat. You can use the Q&A. We also have a few of my colleagues who are admission officers who are there to answer additional questions through chat. So if you have a question, um, sometimes it may be answered by an admission officer, and they may also pass it to our panelists. But we will make sure that, you that we answer every question that's asked, whether it's during today's session or at a later time. So with that said, um, let's get started. Now, I know that a lot of students um, are interested in the idea of being an international student as part of the international student community and also the larger community here at Hamilton. So um, would we be able to talk about um, how easy is it to get involved? Do international students kind of keep to themselves? How does that work here at Hamilton? Um, who, who would, uh, Chiara, do you wanna answer? I can totally answer. So. It's really fun because when you first come, one of some of the first people that you are actually introduced are international students. You know, when you first come, there's specific events for international students. So you get to meet everyone else and all the other students. And so the, the international community is actually the first community that international students are exposed to. But as uh, orientation comes in and then the classes, obviously in the classes, everyone is mixed in and all that it can actually be very easy to then just merge with the rest of the community. And what's really nice that I've at least encountered is so many people are like, don't know about other countries outside of the United States. And so they're always so curious and excited to learn about, you know, different places. And, you know, when I tell people, oh yeah, I'm from Italy, but I live in Spain, everyone is you know, like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And they want to ask and learn and things like that. And everyone here, is so welcoming that it's very, very easy to just find a group of friends that can be mixed and match of international students and locals. And it just kind of flourishes uh, naturally. Some students do stay with other international students, but it's not a, it's not more of a, like how their group kind of, where they found themselves with classes and residence halls and things like that. Um, but for example, for me, I have a mix of my international friends and my and you know local friends. So it's it can be very easy to just incorporate yourself fully in the entirety of the community. Wonderful. Uh, would anybody else like to uh, answer that question? Yeah, just to add on that, like everyone is super inclusive. Like. Um, I remember like when I fir my first time coming to US four years ago, um, I was so scared like to even speak up in class. I was so scared to like make friends. I think uh, there's definitely, uh, if, if, you believe, if you try to make friends, like to say, hey, let's grab a meal. Like, uh, what's your name? Like ask, ask them just really just to, you know, uh, talk to them. Um, it, they are always very receptive. And, you know, my closest friends on campus like are, um, are from the US, which is a weird thing to say, because I don't really consider them as like, oh, you're international, you're not international, but um, you can definitely find the people who can, you know, who are close to you, you can connect with here for sure. And I think one of the ways that people oftentimes can meet people, we've been talking about this quite a lot. Um, each of you is quite involved in the campus community and clubs, organizations. And in fact, that's mm -hmm. a pretty common part of the Hamilton experience. Uh, I, would, I would argue, uh, correct me if you disagree. Um, uh, Maroon, uh, maybe you want to talk to us a little bit about um, uh, what is it like and how do you get involved in different communities and clubs? How does that process happen? 
Yeah, so the main thing is reach out. That's what I always say. I got into all my positions because, you know, when I came in here, I started asking around like, hey, I want a job. Where can I get a job? And then I learned there are some open positions like in the music department and in the Arabic department. And then I saw an email about positions in the AV department. And then I started looking around for clubs. You know, when the clubs send these emails in the beginning of each semester, I started looking at them to see which one would interest me the most. So I went to microfinance club. I spent like a semester there. I didn't really like it. But like at least I met some people over there. I also then, you know, uh, went to the international, it was called back then the International Students Association, and I wanted to get myself involved in it, with it. And now that like, I'm the president, we changed the name to International Cultural Association. And we are, we did this name change because we are uh, restarting everything from fresh because the ISA was non functional basically. And now, like, we hope that we're no longer like that anymore and yeah like like all the communities that i got involved with was because i reached out and i went there i wasn't like scared of going out and be like hey what do you do i'd like to you know be a member of that and that's basically what i tell to everyone just reach out and go so you, you mentioned that there's been kind of a reboot of the ICA, so the International Cultural Association. Mm -hmm. um, so what types of clubs and organizations does the, uh, sorry, what types of events does the ICA host? What are some of the things you all are doing this year? Yeah, so um, this semester so far, we've hosted lun a Lunar New Year celebration all over campus with, like, in collaboration with ASU, Asian Students Union. And we've also, we're also like doing a series of international movies at which we show a different movie from uh, from different countries every now and then. We are also now like have some uh, brain, we're brainstorming some ideas. I, I don't want to like, you know, say them right now before we have them in concrete, but we're also hosting celebrations for International Students Day, which is next week, which is still not announced to the public, but like, you know, now we're announcing it. Secret. <laughs> <laughs> Yara, what was that? You guys are getting a plug. Absolutely. The insider information. <laughs> insider information, fantastic. Uh, wonderful. Um, so uh, let's talk a little bit about, um, uh, maybe you wanna get involved in the community, but you're not necessarily wanting to be a club. So going to an athletic event or an artistic event, something like that. Um, Joaquin, I know you also um, uh, do play with the soccer team. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, what are what is it like to go to an athletic event or a music event? Are there things to do um, on campus? Yeah, um, so I can talk a little bit about uh, outside of my soccer experience, just the fall is, is great and also the winter here because I love watching uh, the fall sports and, and, and hockey in the in the winter. And it, it's a big thing, like you would see uh, um, the entire community moving, in, of course, when COVID's not a thing. Um, going to the games, uh, it, it's a really great uh, atmosphere and environment. Um, and focusing more on events, I know that on um, like being part of the club team or a sports team, um, I think you build a really nice community with, with everyone. And um, I think what Hamilton offers is the opportunity to choose to what degree you want to commit to an activity. So of course, um, if you want to put the time to practice twice a day, every day to be part of a varsity board, you can do that. But if not, and you want to play soccer or basketball or volleyball, you can join a club team. Um, and you still meet a lot of people that are, are share your interests. And, and I think it's great. It's, it's a really great way to, to meet people and kind of keep doing the things you want to do, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's important that there's different levels of involvement people can do. And there's also a, a very strong supportive atmosphere. Maroon, did you want to add to that? Um, not really, no. Ah, just because you unmuted yourself. So I got... Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so um, we did mention really quickly in passing the idea of winter, right? How oh, Joaquin just did. So um, maybe I know that might be something that some students, particularly those from warmer climates, might be a little bit concerned about. So who wants to talk a little bit about winter? How does that work? Okay. I fully get it. I fully got that one. Um, <laughs> so um, I come from Peru, 
I'm, I'm used to my coldest winter being like, what, 12, 13 degrees or around the 50s Fahrenheit. I got here, we get to the zeros Fahrenheit and I was like, oh, okay, cool. This is interesting. Um, but I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun for the first couple of weeks. Seeing snow all over the place, then you get kind of used to it. Um, but as long as you have like a, like a warm coat um, and a couple of boots that won't go rotten <laughs> with the snow, um, it should be totally fine. It's, it's totally doable. And I think, at least for me, I've learned how to handle it as I've gone by. So freshman year, I was a disaster. I was cold every day. But then sophomore year, I kind of like learned from my mistakes. And now I, I, I love it. Um, I use hand lotion a lot because <laughs> my hands would get a little dry, but it's totally doable. And you have a lot of things, cool things to do here in the winter. Like you can go snowshoeing, snowboarding. You can do Nordic skiing, cross country skiing. You can go sliding or sledging. I don't know how you call it. Um, you can go build snowmans, do ice sculptures, go uh, skate in the in the ice rink. So I think it's a great opportunity for me, at least, since we don't get any snow in Latin America, that's where I'm from. So, yeah, I think it's it's a pretty cool experience to be able to say that you were one of the coldest places in the world. <laughs> Those places in the world. <laughs> it feels that way sometimes. I also just want to add, um, this campus is quite small. So that when you're going outside from place to place, you don't really spend that much time outside. So the longest walk you're going to have, for example, is from Science Center to um, one of the residence halls on Dark Side. And that is about a 15 minute walk max if you even are going at a slower pace, but when it's cold, we're just power walking everywhere because it's freezing. Um, so it's not, you're not really spending that much time outside. And what's really nice is, um, especially the international students office knows that a lot of students don't have, you know, big jackets when they come here or not really know what to expect. So they actually, uh, obviously pre-COVID and probably also hopefully next semester, uh, organize scheduled trips to go get um, jackets or other materials. So there's a lot of cases where there's international students that came here without the appropriate equipment and the international students office with Dean uh, Harrison, which I'm sure he has contacted, you know, or you've seen emails from him or something, um, will organize uh, shuttles and trips to get jackets, boots, and also that will be done also for other things such as phones or a bank account. But um, uh, when you first come into the United States, but if you're worried about oh my gosh, I don't know where to get a jacket or what jacket to get, things like that, you can also just wait until you reach here because <laughs> um, you won't need it really until I want to say October, maybe beginning of November. I think it's a good, it's a good uh, note for sure, because I know we have a student uh, here uh, on campus from Ghana and he talks oftentimes like he bought the biggest coat he could get in Kumasi. And it was like his roommate saw it was like, that's just not going to do it, man. Um, so, um, so yeah, if you're worried about that, we will definitely help you as well. We also do have a program where um, if you are here on financial aid, we can also use sometimes financial aid funding to help get coats and boots and things like that. So that's very possible. Um, but um, anything else on the weather? Maroon, Jerry? Yeah, I wanted to add just like one little thing. This year, like, sorry, next year, the ICA is organizing the shopping trip as part of like, you know, one of the orientation activities. But yeah, there's a, I just wanted to add that. Oh, wonderful. That's great. Um, good to know. Okay, so then let's, um, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, maybe when keep, keeping with the idea of when you first arrive, um, did anybody have a story of something that you forgot when you first came here? You're like, oh, I forgot this item. What was it? What did you do? How did that turn out? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so I forgot my, my flight. I forgot my plane. I missed my plane. plane. Yeah. Like, like you showed up the wrong day or how did that work? Um, I... So I had, I had a layover in two layovers, one in Miami, one in Atlanta. Um, so I, I go to Miami, kind of got too distracted, left and, and I missed my flight. So um, 
I had to stay in Orlando for like a Miami sorry for like what a day <laughs> um and yeah it was it was a great experience first time coming to New York <laughs> by myself I had to stay at a hotel um to like figure things out um I was eating so much Chipotle. I was the only thing that I trusted, so I only ate Chipotle. Um, but then, I guess more in the when I was already on campus side, um, something physical that I forgot at home. I forgot my my soccer jerseys um, that I had to order through Amazon here, and they're much more expensive than they were down <laughs> there, but. <laughs> Tough lesson, but at least they were you're able to get them yeah yeah <laughs> yeah cherry how about you yeah just i forgot my blanket when i first came here but it was not like a forget it there's just no room like i know for packing wise if you're flying like 10 hours of fly from like across the world like these kind of things like blanket like I know my grandma was like you have to put this in like they're not gonna have it there like pillows like please don't bring any of those like just order from Amazon or like we have Target uh just buy here is much more easier and um and it can save you a lot of space and for like essentials no need to bring like a ton of like toothpaste like I brought so many like toothbrushes like I was just like freshman me I want to be super prepared but these kind of things can definitely be safe and can save can save you some weight to carry um for sure but you can bring your like favorite like like stuff from the family that can remind you of your home these kind of things are more worthy to bring um I think yeah I think that's a very good a good note particularly um since the um ICA is working now with um, Dina Student's Office to help organize uh, shopping trips for students the first week. I think that can hopefully be a little bit of a relief as well to think I don't have to bring everything because there'll be people who can suggest um, good things to have for residence halls and, and you can kind of learn from experience from other people, right? So a supportive community in that regard. Um, how about we talk about uh, first coming to Hamilton? Uh, what was a bigger, did anybody experience like any surprises? something you didn't expect when you first got here to Hamilton. What was that? Maroon, you're nodding very loud, very, very loudly. Loudly, it's not the correct word, but um, you're nodding a lot. So, um, and there goes Kiara as well. Um, so what it, what was the surprise? Yeah, like my biggest surprise, what, my story, my biggest surprise wasn't the campus itself. It was the local community around campus. You know, back then it was simpler times. We were allowed to go off campus to Clinton and Utica. Now, yeah, it is true that we might be living in the middle of nowhere, but Utica is literally 15 minutes away, and there are a lot of things to do there. When I first arrived, I was so surprised to find that there is a huge Lebanese community in the area, and that I was even more surprised to find out that the priest at the Lebanese church, what, like, he was going to be, sorry, the, like, there was a new priest coming in, and he was my middle school teacher back home, so he became the, the priest here uh, in the area. And what? he is now the chaplain at the college. What? That's yeah, I can't believe it. I'm like, you taught me in grade five. You're teaching me now in, uh, in uh, college again. So like, I, this was my biggest surprise. You know, the local area and all the activities that we can do in the local area, hopefully next semester when we're done with COVID. Yeah, absolutely. And the big Lebanese community in the area, right? Yeah. Um, absolutely. How about Kiara? Uh, my main surprise was from an academic perspective because um, I studied, spent my whole life learning in an Italian academic system. So I went to Italian kinder, uh, you know, preschool, elementary, middle, and high school. Um, and it's very, very different. And some of the things that I, you know, found that were kind of surprising were two things mainly. One, the relationship that you can build with professors, the fact that a lot of professors prefer to be called uh, by their first name and not their la and not by professor uh, last name. Um, the fact that they you can just go and talk to them during office hours or just see them at a dining hall and be able to start a conversation on literally anything and not have to be a super formal thing because in the Italian school system, we expect you to be very, very formal. I remember one of the first uh, classes I was in, it's 
So in Italy, whenever a professor walks in, we have to stand up and greet them standing up and saying all in like chorus, good morning, Professor X. And I remember very vividly in my Cal 2 class, standing up and then slowly sitting down. That wasn't something that- <laughs> Yeah. Um, or the other thing, which I thought was really funny was the use of pencil. Mm. Um, in, my, in my school, uh, in high school, using pencil would have made you fail the exam because the logic there was a pencil can be erased. Therefore, pencils on official documents such as exams can be erased. Therefore, that is not okay. And when I came here and I handed my homework in pen, my professors looked at me kind of insane. Like, what do you do with pen? Like, you just thought you were very confident. You're like, I don't need pencils. <laughs> Well, not really, because I'd have everything just scratched off everyone's. Okay. <laughs> They're like, why not pencil? And those are definitely some difference. The much more uh, encouraging and welcoming and sort of uh, that relationship of they know they're your professor. So obviously there's a sense of respect, but there's no superiority of I'm a professor. Therefore, I'm better than you. And I, it's a I want to help you. Because I, I know more of this subject than you, obviously, and I want to help you um, just thrive. And I think that was something that really pleasantly uh, surprised me. Very good, very cool. So, Cherry, you had a uh, you wanted to add? Yeah, just to build on that, like I think because Hamilton's professors, the reason they chose a liberal arts school to work at is because they want to have the relationship with the students. And I think just, I guess from like agency perspective, like from our own perspective, it's always good to um, always build a relationship with professors because obviously not every single student are the closest to the professor. So um, definitely like go to office hours. I know those are like, like little tips and tricks you can learn to really maximize the opportunities that you have here for sure. And I remember like my closest, closest professor she would invite me to her house and I would have like little tea time like just talk about like my worries and you know it was just it was just so lovely so absolutely so the approachability of professors is definitely a new thing and uh, for a lot of people and particularly at a liberal arts college like Hamilton now I know um we're getting a couple questions that are in the Q&A and um, students are really uh, interested in the different residence hall backgrounds, right? I'm sure it's something that causes uh, some people a little bit of stress, which is how do you navigate the uh, housing situation at Hamilton? Mm -hmm. um, so would somebody be able to talk a little bit about um, student housing? How does housing selection work for the first year and how does it change then for continuing years? Yeah, Kiara, you want to go? I would love to jump into this because <laughs> I so for freshman year, I, so all students live on campus all four years. Uh, I believe it's mandatory, but it, so all students live on campus all four years, which is actually really nice because everything is close by, you live with all your friends, so it's actually really, really nice. Freshman year, um, you have, they give out, they send out a survey where it asks, you know, your, your preferences of would you prefer living in a double, a triple, a quad? Would you prefer living in a, a co-ed floor or a single sex floor? Would you, you know, things like that. So that then the admissions office can try and match you and match every student as well as possible with a dorm uh, and type of residence that they would like. So for example, I, when I first came, I knew I wanted to try going co-ed floor, um, you know, and I knew I, I preferred living in a double instead of anything bigger. And I was lucky and I was assigned a double on a co-ed floor dark side. Um, and your first year, you, you cannot get singles. Uh, you're a freshman year. So freshman year, they want you to share rooms. They, are, they want you to meet people. So there's no singles for freshmen or first years. Um, so that's how it is the, the, your very first year. From there, during the spring, you enter what is known as the housing lottery. Um, there's different types of housing on campus. So one of the, diff one of the types, for example, is substance-free. So if you're a student that, you know, doesn't really enjoy, you know, doesn't smoke, doesn't like to party, doesn't like to have that uh, environment near them or near their room, there are options of substance-free dorms 
we're, we're in those dorms, you're not allowed to have any form of alcohol, any, you know, other forms of substances. And it's a much calmer sort of environment. Um, so that's, for example, where I'm living. I live in Kirkland, which is an upperclassman dorm. Um, oh, that's another thing. Is freshman dorms are specifically for uh, freshmen. So if you live on a floor, everyone on your floor is a freshman. Sometimes also buildings. Um, so major, which is a residence hall dark side, is all freshmen. Um, but what happens then is as you go ahead, you'll enter this housing lottery where depending on your choice of, oh, I wanna go into the general lottery or I wanna do a substance free, you get assigned a number and depending on how good your number is, you know, from one to how many students are there, um, you get then to pick what um, dorm you're, you wanna live in, obviously given certain options. And you can now choose, oh, I would much rather live in a single, I wanna live with five other friends, so I wanna try and go for a suite, which is where Joaquin is living. Um, I wanna live light side, which is where I'm living, or dark side, where Cherry is. Um, so you really have a lot more of a choice. So what was your, what was your lottery number this year? My, for coming for this year, I believe my lottery number was three, no, maybe higher. But like low, that sounds like a good number. Yeah. Oh, no, definitely a very good number. No, 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 it was definitely a, a, a five. That seems pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, well, I, I do want to also just clarify that admissions office is not going to be the one that's going to pair you with your roommates. That's going to be residence life. Oh, so, <laughs> but um, other than that, um, absolutely so helpful. Thank you. Thank you. So hopefully that clarifies a little bit about the housing selection process, because I can understand that's something a lot of people are nervous about ahead of time. And so, of course, if you... Um, uh, you will have a roommate for your first year, as Kiara said, um, and usually it works out pretty well, but if it doesn't work out, there's a process for that as well, so don't, don't worry too much about that. Um, okay, so let's talk then a little bit about, um, let's, we had a question about um, exploring the woods in the surrounding area, but I think maybe I'd like to talk about like what weekends are like on Hamilton. Would you be exploring the woods? Are there events? What, what's a traditional weekend like at Hamilton? Um, who would like to who would like to talk about that? Uh, go ahead, Joaquin. Uh, yeah, I can jump in. Um, so through weekends, I think are whatever you want them to be. Um, so I have weekends where, like, I normally try to like grind when I'm not on season and have to practice twice a day, and I have actual time. Um, I try to finish all my work during the week, and then have the weekends completely free to just do nothing. But um, normally, um, what I personally would do is um, wake up, probably um, study a little bit, then go see some friends, probably go longboard or um, just hang out with, with my friends and then do some more work and at night. I mean, probably go to a party or, or, or see how, how things are going. But there's definitely um, a wide variety of things you can do on the weekends. Um, like a lot, like way too many things you can do. So um, I, I think there's there's not a, a single answer for how a, a weekend looks like since it's it really depends on how every person wants them to look like, I think. Absolutely, so Cherry, what would your weekend look like? Yeah, um, yeah, just to echo what Joaquin said, uh, I think definitely like you, there's no pressure to kind of have your weekend a certain way in order to fit in the norm because there's really no norm for your weekend should be like. Um, my weekend, so I mean, Chris, currently the semester is just a little abnormal. I love to take on long walks with my friends in the morning, just in the woods and explore the Glen uh, because I live in Darkside and there's also one uh, like close to the middle of the campus. And um, so I wake up, so I'm a morning person. I wake up at like 8 a.m. on the weekends as well. And then I will explore the camp. I will just go on walks in the morning. And then in the afternoon, I will do a bit more work. Uh, and in the evening, so I, I really like small hangs. Sometimes I just like have like cheese and wine, like, you know, like with friends. Uh, and then, so 
just to touch on a little bit about the party life, if you guys are interested, uh, it's definitely very easy uh, if you want to go. It, there are so many opportunities around campus and there is no closed parties. Um, so um, so, so if, that, if that's something on your mind, uh, don't, uh, don't, be, don't be afraid. So yeah. Cherry, you, you did mention the Glen. What is the Glen? Can you talk more about what's that? Yeah, so the Glen is, um, how should I describe the Glen? Is So it's a place with a lot of woods. <laughs> I don't know, is Kira, is there a better way to it's, define it? Yeah, it's surrounding woods that has different trails. So it's the area all around campus that's just woods and trees, but there's a lot of trails in there so that you can go and go on like mini hikes or runs or just walks and there's different lengths and you can go you know there's their colored trails so you can go down the red trail or the blue trail and they're longer or shorter uh you can go really deep into the glen into the woods and all of a sudden find yourself at like the bottom of a stream or just take a 20 minute walk around just to clear your head i know during finals last semester because I was still here on campus for finals between one exam and another I knew I just couldn't sit sit, sit down and keep studying so I just would get up and be like okay I know that this route is will take me about 30 minutes to you know just chill and listen to music and walk around um so that's really what the Glen is it's just beautiful um paths like walking biking paths in the middle of the woods it's gorgeous and if you're lucky you got to see fox foxes yeah that's pretty cool um i know that uh, we also do have we have an outdoor adventure center on campus so mm -hmm. if you wanted to you can rent bikes you can rent even in the winter snowshoes cross-country skis all of that and those are kind of some things that a lot of students will try and do once or twice during their time at hamilton in fact there's i know there's kind of a tradition of the hamilton bucket list which the idea is things you should do before you graduate right um, so does somebody want to talk about what's on your Hamilton bucket list? What do you want to do um, before you finish here at Hamilton? Um, I, I actually play a season because I've been, I haven't been able to play a, a soccer game. So because oh, of the because of the COVID situation, right? Yeah, so I want to do that. Um, and I think that's, oh, and learn how to snowboard. That, that'd that be kind of cool. Oh, and also, oh, I did that I did it last week. So one of my goals was to run uh, the big loop on campus, so like the six mile one, and it worked out. So yeah. <laughs> six miles last weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, that's pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> the cornfields? Sorry? The cornfields? Yes, like G Road and then all the other way around. Yeah. I think I did that cross country skiing this year going around the cornfields. That was pretty fun. Um, uh, but yeah, um, so other other Hamilton bucket list items. Maroon, how about you? I don't have any. Like I'm thinking of it right now and I'm not really a person for bucket lists. <laughs> this is already involved, already doing things, don't put them off type person. Yeah. 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 All right, cool. Well, we have something to think about then, something to consider for the future. Um, so let, let's talk a little bit about another thing that I think causes some people a little anxiety, which is food, right? Um, so when you come from another country, of course, uh, you have some nervousness about, is the food gonna be different? A lot of students would have dietary restrictions, whether for uh, health reasons, religious reasons, cultural reasons. Um, can somebody talk a little bit about food options and is the college inclusive of different dietary needs? Go ahead, anybody, go ahead. Uh, uh, I, I, you go, you go get it. Um, so I know that the school tries really, really hard to make sure that there's dietary options for everyone. Um, they try hard also for religious reasons. I know, for example, now what they've been doing every Friday is have fish for Fish Friday. Or um, I remember my first two, uh, um, last, or my freshman year when we were still on campus, because you know, last year we weren't really on campus the second semester, but during Ramadan, 
Uh, they would offer also specific like meal packages for everyone who would be fasting and would end their fast like later in the day if maybe the dining hall was closed and all that. And they try to make sure that there's also options for allergies. So recently, Commons, which is one of the main one of the dining halls. So there's really three main dining halls, which were Commons Dining Hall, McEwen Dining Hall, and then our diner. Um, diner is kind of the fun esque of let's go get burgers and fries and you know tater tots and chili and all of that. Um, but uh, Commons, for example, they started doing this line called Oasis which is their allergen uh, aware. So it's like dairy-free, nut-free, uh, soy-free. They always try to have vegetarian options um, or even vegan options sometimes. At the pizza station, they'll always have a vegan pizza. Um, and if all of that doesn't work, there's the salad bar or the sandwich bar where you can kind of customize and make your own uh, salad or sandwich. Uh, so there's really a lot of options. What's nice is when you first come to Hamilton, you go on what is called the 21 meal plan, which is, is the unlimited meal plan, meaning uh, you can use your little hill card. Wait, let me actually show you. Where is it? I keep it in this little thing. Um, you have your little hill card. Hey. <laughs> swipe as many times as you want. When you go into a dining hall, you have to swipe your card to you know just use a meal plan. But when you're on the 21 meal plan, which is what you will be as freshmen, it's unlimited. So if you wanted to go in a dining hall 16 times a day, you can. And, it's <laughs> um, and then as you go on, if you realize, oh, I actually prefer cooking my own food and I don't really need to go on the 21 meal plan, there's also the 14 and the seven, which allows you either two or one swipes a day, respectively. So the 14 would be two swipes a day, and the seven would be the one swipe. Um, but there's really a lot of options and they really try, you know, uh, the different dining halls to have different options, making sure that every student can, or almost every student, obviously there's gonna be the exception such as that one person that's allergic to literally everything. I have a friend who is allergic to corn, carrots, apples, peanuts, gluten, <laughs> literally everything. But even there, Hamilton has, been in contact with her, you know, telling her, hey, there's these food options that don't have any of the things that you're allergic to, or we'll have this um, that we know you can eat. So it, there's a really, really good uh, variety, I would say. It's a wonderful. Thank you so much for clarifying. Hopefully that uh, puts a little a little bit of ease. Um, I know that another thing that we had some questions submitted ahead of time by registrants uh, had to do with safety. Um, so of course, coming to another country can be a really uh, can be a brave thing to do in the best of circumstances, and safety is on everybody's mind. I'm wondering um, if Cherry, if you'd be able to talk a little bit about safety on campus. Yeah. So. Um... So all the dorms, uh, especially now, even SEDAF, which is like, there's there's a few academic buildings as well. Like you have to swipe the card in order to enter. So um, basically if you're not from Hamilton, you just cannot enter. And uh, we have uh, campus safety on campus and they used to do like rounds, uh, just drive their cars around to see if there's any, um, any things that, that's worth their attention. And I don't know, I, I really feel like just very, very safe here, especially just being on campus. Um, I think students, there is a sense of trust. Uh, I don't know, I, I like to leave my backpacks everywhere, like on the grass. Uh, and it is like with the mutual understanding that no one will ever touch them. And if you lose something, like I lost my hill card, like literally the other day, and then like a friend of a friend literally just texted me say I have your hair card like like these kind of and there's money on my hair card so like these kind of things um, I think the community is a very trustworthy community and at the same time we have the facilities like we have this extra protection from the school yeah absolutely so it's, you'd say it's a pretty safe feeling environment you feel pretty safe and leaving your backpack places and all of that. I know I do the same thing when I park my car on campus. I don't lock the doors or anything like that. Um, it's a, a pretty safe community. Does uh, somebody else want to add to that? Thoughts? It's it's a very nice, you can leave 
you know, in academic buildings or outside, if you have to leave your backpack or your computer or things like that, just to go elsewhere, like it's very common for students to be working somewhere and then um, be like, oh, we want to go get food and just leave everything where they are and they can come back and totally find it. And everyone's very uh, respectful. And another thing, another feature is there's blue lights around campus. So if it's dark and you're out and then there's something that you're like, I'm feeling very, I don't feel really safe. If you see a blue light, you can call campus safety or some form of security that will come there immediately. Um, so those are all spread out around campus. So that even adds even more safe to the safe feeling. Absolutely, thank you, thank you. Um, so we have, a, we have a question about what do students do during long breaks? So like over the summer or over the winter? Um, uh, does somebody want to talk about like, do you go home? Does somebody do research? Pro intern like, what do you do over long breaks? I can take that. Go ahead. Um, so for me, every, every single break, I try my best to go back home and every single break, I've been successful in doing that. And the way I structure it is that winter break is my break break. And then summer break is my work break. So last summer, I had an internship for the whole summer. And this summer, hopefully, I'm getting uh, funding for research. So what I do basically is during the winter, I go back home and relax. And during the summer, like last summer, I went back home for my internship. And if everything works out this summer, I'm going to go back home for my research. What's your research project going to be? Yeah, my research project this summer, this summer will be about um, the different, like, we're going to first measure how bad it is in terms of religious discrimination, in terms of real estate pricing, and what is the economic loss that Lebanon is ensuring because of such discrimination. Oh, so kind of looking at housing prices versus uh, religious backgrounds in Lebanon and trying to see uh, how that plays out. Yeah. More like, you know how in the 1960s there was segregation in the U.S. in terms of race? Now in Lebanon, there's still segregation, but it's in terms of religion. We just want to see if different religious groups will treat members from other religious groups differently in terms of housing prices. Very interesting. And, that, uh, and you said you're wor working with uh, funding from the college. So the college is going to be funding your research? Hopefully, I'm going to get the final OK next week. Final okay is coming next week. So we're fingers crossed for sure. Yes. Um, uh, but that's that's a great um, segue into the idea of research. Has anybody else been involved with research on campus? Cherry, you're raising your hand. Yeah, just to add on that. Um, so I, I, so there's two, I'm not exactly sure for STEM, but for social science, there are Emerson and Leva you can apply for. And um, well, I've, I've got two, so I've done two Levitt um, so one for the summer and one for the winter uh, last year, well, this year, -ish. L last year, like coming to the, it's, it's so strange um, right now. It's, the grant is pretty, uh, pretty awesome. I, if I remember correctly is, so it's, it's 3000 for the winter and it's even more for the, for the summer. So you get to use that money to do research. Um, and I did it for anthropology and it's just, it's really awesome. And you, you got to talk to your professor to do something you love um, and and to save up for some extra money, um, you know. Would you say that re doing research is pretty common at Hamilton? Is that a rare thing to do? Common? Rare? I would say it's very common. Uh, most of my friends have, have done it and um, like as long as you apply and really put effort in the application, um, it, you should usually get it. And you were saying um, a lot of your research has to do with humanities and Maroons is, of course, uh, has to do with cultural backgrounds as well as economics and all of that type of thing. But uh, would you agree that uh, research is something for all different academic disciplines or? Yeah, I'm sure Kira can uh, jump that for STEM and math. All right. I also moved because I was kind of cold in the shade. So <laughs> not now I'm going to get sun. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, I did a research project last uh, summer in the math department. And it was the easiest thing I'd ever done because I literally went to my uh, uh, academic advisor and asked her, hey, do you, do you need anyone to do research? And she responded, yes. And that was it. And I got a research project, which was excellent. Um, 
So I did a research project last summer in com a combinatorial uh, math, really abstract, really kind of complicated, um, but really, really interesting. And um, it was remote. So I unfortunately cannot say for, you know, if you have to be an in-person or, you know, how the housing would work uh, on campus. But I do remember a lot of other of my friends uh, doing research the year before COVID and they had housing on campus and were able to get some accommodations uh, uh, during uh, the summer to stay here and do research here. Uh, and I know a friend of mine is currently working uh, in the chemistry department on a, another research project that she will actually continue also over the summer. So you can start something during the semester and continue it over the summer. Um, but research is literally in every department and it doesn't have to be a super formal send in applications requests. You can just go up to your professors and ask, hey, do you need uh, someone to help you with research or do you know a professor here that is doing research? And they will most likely answer, yes, I'm doing research or this professor's doing research, go talk to them. And that is, um, it kind of brings us back to that idea of what can you do over the summer as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you are very correct. So a lot of students I know um, will actually live on campus and do their research over the summer using lab facilities, things like that. And then some students will do what Maroon is going to be doing, which is taking their research funding and going abroad to different types of locations, really depending on what you're working on. But I think that's hopefully hopefully very helpful. Um, now, in talking about like taking your research uh, back with you and traveling and all of that, we did have a question that was submitted talking about how accessible is campus to like train stations and airports? We've been talking a little bit about the idea that Utica is pretty close by. How accessible is everything? Uh, I will, can I jump in? Sure. So Ham Hamilton in and of itself is actually quite isolated. So Hamilton lives on a hill in a little, t in a little village, like not even a town, a tiny, um, a tiny village. And so it's quite far. So you can't, it's Clinton, Utica is not at a walking uh, distance and there's Ubers around here and all of that. However, for transportation that requires, for example, you to go, you know, to um, an airport, a train station and all that, there's a, a office, which is a, the transportation office here that you can contact and they will help you set up either with a student driver or a local um transportation service to get you where you need to go. So last semester, for example, going to Syracuse, which is the closest airport, is an hour away. And I contacted Hamilton Transportation. I was like, hi, I need, you know, I need to get to Utica, not Utica, Syracuse. Uh, how could I get there? You know, things like that. And they said, oh, we've organized a ride for you. It'll be at your dorm at this day, this time. Um, and, or even now, you know, especially now when a lot of people have to go get, you know, they're getting vaccinated or they're going to other doctor's appointments or having to go off campus, you can just contact uh, the uh, transportation office and they will figure out a ride either with a Uber local transportation service or a Hamilton uh, student that will take what we call the Jitney, which is just the Hamilton shuttle. Um, so Hamilton is quite kind of isolated, but they try to make it as easy as possible for you to still reach wherever you have to go, whether it be, you know, a doctor's office, you have to go to the airport, you have to go to the train station. Um, so it's, it's, very, it's actually very easy to access other locations. And the Jitney service that you mentioned is also pretty helpful because it does take students, it goes in kind of continuous loops, right? So we'll take you into Clinton where you have the grocery store and we'll take you to New Hartford where you have like the mall and the Target. And then on weekends, it also will do a loop to Utica. So if you're trying to get to Utica, very accessible on weekends and you'd have an app on your phone where you can see where that is. Okay, so we're getting close to the end of the session today. Um, so I'd like to um, think a little bit about um, what was something that you wish someone had told you before you arrived at Hamilton, right? So it could be about your first time coming to the US. It could be about Hamilton specifically. What do you wish someone had told you before you came to Hamilton? Um, uh, Maroon, you wanna start us off? Um, let me think about it. You know, somebody else wants to jump in first. Okay, great. Yeah. 
Jerry, go ahead. It. You got it. <laughs> Jerry, go ahead. Okay. Um, I think, I think, I think I had a lot of expectation for myself, like social wise, academic wise, health wise, like fitness wise, uh, just everything. But really, I really wished someone just told my freshman self, say, really don't stress. And they got you like the, the friends you're going to naturally make through the events that the school planned for you. And like, like, and then just like the professors, they are there for to support you, especially when you are stressed, like there's always who to talk to. Like, I just wish um, I have that in the back of my mind, like don't stress, like, comp like, I guess looking back, there are moments that I could have enjoyed more. I could have uh, reached out more. I think those are the moments that I um, definitely could done better, but don't, I just don't worry. I know it's so vague, but it, it's, it's really a mindset thing. Um, but Absolutely. So a little bit like de-stress, be kind to yourself, right? And things are going to work out. Uh, Joaquin, how about you? Yeah, for me, I, I really underestimated Americans' ability in soccer. I thought it was going to be much <laughs> easier. Uh, um, <laughs> And and also how much you guys run and like how athletic the overall American is. So I have a lot of friends that are athletes and just their stories of like what they used to do in high school and their preparation. And it's just unbelievable. Like me in high school, I couldn't even run three kilometers. And these guys went on running like 15 or 20 when they were like in eighth grade. So okay. um I, I wish I, I would have known that to prepare better for, for, for the team, but yeah. And um, Maroon, how about you? Yeah, if I were to say something, actually, I would say don't burn yourself with too many things. Um, like one of the things, I don't want to say I regret it, but you know, when I first arrived, I tried to involve myself with as many things as possible which and like i did burn myself out sometimes then i scaled back on some of the activities i'm doing so this is what i say like involve yourself but don't involve yourself to the point where you will not have time to relax and de-stress absolutely and kiara um my biggest tip would say allow you to, you know don't worry about if all of a sudden your interests change when i came here i actually came to hamilton as a golf uh, team uh, recruit and when I came here I was like oh I'm gonna play golf and I'm gonna do physics and I'm going to be super into abstract math and all of that um, but as time went on I realized actually my interests are changing and I like golf but I don't really want to you know dedicate so much time as I am currently and I like math but I actually like more applied maths and maybe I don't want to do as much physics as I thought and realizing that and changing kind of the route, the path that I had set myself to go down before even coming here and realizing actually that's not what I want to do. I want to do something different is totally okay. And realizing that and, and knowing that that is okay and it's completely normal and it's actually a sign of you just growing as a person is really important. I was afraid because I was like, oh my God, I did all this work to come here as a golf student athlete. And now realizing that maybe I don't want to be a golf student athlete, what have I done? It is no, this is this is just you learning more about yourself, um, which I think is really, really key. Um, and realizing that and acknowledging that that happens is something that I, I wish someone had told me before. And now that I know it just made everything so much better. So it um, sounds like it's kind of as a summation, just realize that some, like Americans may surprise you sometimes, um, cut yourself a little bit of slack and realize things are going to work out. Um, make sure that when you're involved, try and apply yourself to places that are important and realize that you're going to change through this experience, right? And that's part of college experience. It's not just academics. It's about a lot. It's growth and growing as a person. And I think that's a really, really lovely thing to kind of end on. And I wanted to say thank you so much. Um, to each of our panels today. I really appreciate you. I know our students appreciate you as well. And to everyone who's calling in again um, from all around the world, thank you so much for joining us. We are so excited 
to have offered you a spot in our class of 2025. Congratulations again. Um, we know that you would have such great opportunities here at Hamilton. We're so thrilled. Um, I also wanted to encourage you to keep checking back in your portal and keep checking that Hamilton Explore page as we are gonna be adding more and more sessions similar to this. We're gonna be doing another international focus session. It's gonna be on April 7th. So it'll be at this time again. And we're gonna be talking about global careers. I know one of the things that Cherry does is she works in the Career Center. Um, so uh, one of our other international students, Jafar, is gonna be joining us and talking about experiences at Hamilton with internships, research, and career out outcomes. So we really encourage you to come to that session. It's gonna be on April 7th. I think that's also a little bit of a heads up because I don't think it's on the website yet, but you can look for that, it's coming soon. Um, but with that said, thank you all so much. Uh, we hope that you have a great week. We really appreciate you. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the admissions office at any time. And with that, uh, have a good day, have a good evening, have a good night, depending on where you're calling from. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone.